this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week we're going to be learning how to play a country lead. It's actually a very slow, uh, dramatic, emotional country lead. I love this kind of playing. A lot of the country stuff that you see out there is real fast, the chicken picking stuff, and I've never been able to do that stuff very well, but this kind of stuff is a lot more fun and a lot more in my wheelhouse because it's sort of connected to the blues. I'm trying to emulate a pedal steel in some of these licks. And we're going to be playing the chord changes. So as the chords change, we're going to be changing the scales to match those chords. And I'll explain all of that in this lesson so that you can start to use this stuff when you play and when you improvise. That's really the goal of this lesson and all of the lessons at Active Melody. So I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half, and get the tablature and download the mp3 jam track so that you can practice playing all these licks uh, with a band. You can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP291. Alright, so when you're playing a real slow song like this, and it doesn't matter what the format, this could be country or blues or jazz, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a different approach to thinking about improvising lead that you would take than if you were playing a faster song. Now when you're playing a faster song, the chords are moving by quicker and you don't have as much time to hang out on those chords. So for example, if we were playing a rock song in the key of A and you could have an A chord and an F sharp minor chord and a D chord, an E chord and so forth, those chords are going by too quick. So what most of us end up doing is playing in the key of the song. So we would play either the A major pentatonic scale in that case, or the A minor pentatonic scale, or blend those two scales. But you'd be thinking about the key of the song, not necessarily all the chords that are going by. Now this is a different approach. Now what we're about to learn has just a few basic chords, just a 1-4-5 chord progression, but we hang out on those chords for a much longer period of time. So if I were to take that same approach and apply it here, and let's say just play the A major pentatonic scale, it's going to start to sound pretty boring pretty quickly. Uh, now you could do that, uh, but it, it just it's going to start sounding like you're playing scales and your, your, your solos aren't going to have as much meaning. So what we're going to do is we're going to be thinking about chord shapes in different positions on the neck. We're going to be thinking about arpeggios, how we, you know, an arpeggio is just a broken chord, so pulling notes out of chords, and just thinking about the, the whole process differently. We're not necessarily even going to be thinking about scales. I'll touch on them in a few spots, but for the most part, we're not going to be thinking about them. Now, for a little background homework, if you're not familiar with the caged system, that's C-A-G-E-D, uh, you're going to want to uh, check out uh, two lessons that I have on that. So you can go to the Active Melody website and do a search for EP273. That's where I go over the major chord shapes and then EP275 where I go over the minor chord shapes. You don't have to necessarily go through the whole thing and have it all down pat, but just at least be, be familiar with the process so that you understand what I'm talking about. When I say an A chord, it's not just down here. An A chord can look different. You know, you can have all these different places that you can play it. So that's really what you need to at least understand. Okay, so that's the background information. Now this song is in the key of A, and uh, as I mentioned, it's a 1-4-5 chord progression. So we have our one chord, which is an A, four chord is a D, five chord is an E, and that's going to get us through most of the song, believe it or not, just those three chords. So the song starts off then... playing on the A chord, we go, we do it four times, one, two, three, four, then it goes to the A7, and then to the D. Now I'll explain that A7 in a minute, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that, but let's start with the first thing that we play. So the first thing that I play is just an A triad, and it's played up here on the neck, so I've got my middle finger. I'm playing the D chord shape, by the way, and this is why I mentioned the caged system. So if you know how to play a D chord down in first position, you're just going to slide that same shape up so that your middle finger and your index finger are now on the ninth fret. And we're just going to play those top three strings. That's an A chord using the D chord shape. And so that's what I started with. So when we count this in, when you're playing along with the jam track, you'll hear the four clicks. One, two, three, four, and then you start with that A chord right on the one of the next measure. And then the next thing I played... Look at that. So what happened there? All I was doing was playing the notes out of the A7 chord shape. And so if you know how to play this shape, that's your D shape, uh, but I'm playing an A chord, 
I can take those same two notes there on that ninth fret, strings one and three, and now I'm just going to switch my finger. So I've got my ring finger on the first string and my middle finger on the third string. And now I'll put my index finger on the eighth fret, second string. That's a D, or I'm sorry, that's an A7 chord using the D7 chord shape. So if you think of a D7 down here, it's the same chord shape. So hopefully a little light bulb went off for some of you where you, you just realized, oh, I got a major chord and then I've got a seven chord and they're right there. So it's easy to get back and forth between them. Now you can use this in any key. That's why the cage thing is so important. So if we were playing the key of G, you can, you can go from your major to your seven and then to your four chord. So the, the, the why the seven chord, uh, it's a, just a transition chord. I always think of it that way. It's the easiest way to describe it. So anytime you're playing a song that has a one, four, five chord progression, when you're going from the one chord to the four chord, you can use that seven chord as a, a little transition chord to get you there. You know the four chord is coming, so you can play the seven chord, or when you start to get a little more advanced, you can start picking the notes out of the chord. Which is what we're doing here, and it just gives gives your lead a much more colorful melodic sound. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Two, three. So after that, I played uh, three, two, one, and then I went. I did a little hammer on with my pinky to the tenth fret first string. Then I took it off. Now we came down to the seventh fret, and then down to the uh, fifth fret. That's on the first string. Now what I'm doing in my mind is I know that we're going from the, the, the one chord to the four chord. So I'm thinking about the four chord now because that's, that's where we're headed. So I'm picturing the D chord shape right here. Now most of you know this version of that, right? That's using the A chord shape, but I'm playing a D chord. But I mentioned in that caged uh, lesson that I did, when I think of caged, I think of this chord in like a couple of places. I think of that as like the bottom part of the chord and then the top part of the chord. And so that's what I'm visualizing here is it's just a D chord using this triad. So I've got my index finger on the uh, to play the chord, just to give you the visual of the chord. Index finger is on the uh, fifth fret first string, ring finger is on the seventh fret second string, and middle finger is on the seventh fret third string. Now we're not going to actually play the chord like that, but I want you to see that chord. I want you to visualize it and know where we're going. So that this all starts to make sense. It's like a puzzle that's being unveiled here. Two, three. So now we're down into that D chord position. So now when I play, you can see why that worked, or at least how I was able to do that. Now I wasn't necessarily thinking of any advanced theory or any of that stuff. I was just picturing the chord shape. And that's what's nice about playing this way. It's kind of like playing lead without having to know all of that background information. You can just kind of picture these chord spots. Okay, so when I came down here, what I did was I had my index finger on the 5th fret, 1st string, ring finger is on the 7th fret, 2nd string. Those are two notes in that D chord I showed you. But I did a half bend on the 7th fret, 2nd string with my ring finger while holding down that 5th fret, 1st string. And then a release. So you have... Now don't over bend it. It'd be very easy to over bend it. It's going to sound wrong. Just a half bend. So you're trying to hit a note that's one fret higher than where you start when you do a half bend. And I'm trying to get that pedal steel sound out of this. You'll hear the pedal steel in the jam track in the background. And that's me, by the way. I'm just, I'm just kind of getting into it and trying to figure it out. Uh, it's not my best work, but I wanted to give it that kind of old honky-tonk country feel. Okay, so we have... And then... I concluded with that. That's where I'm just barring the first two strings here on the 5th fret and I'm going to do a hammer-on between the 5th fret and the 7th fret on the 2nd string. It's a downstroke on the 2nd string, an upstroke on the 1 string, and then back to that 2nd string. So, and let it all ring out. Okay, so... Hopefully these notes now make sense. We weren't thinking about a scale, we were just thinking about 
your chord shape. So now I want you to take this lick that you just learned and how can you apply that to something else? Now if you had another song that had a jam track and you just knew what chords, what the chords were, that's all you need to know. If you know what the chords are, let's say there's an E chord, now you can play that lick over that. Or if it's a C chord, you can start to take all of these licks that you're learning pull them out as little puzzle pieces and now add them to your bag and the next time you're you're improvising you start using them and I know a lot of people say well, I can't remember them all that's okay uh, is just remember a few try and get two or three out of this lesson and start to use them play them with other jam tracks so that they start to stick into your your thought process all right backing up one two three four two three Now this is where the song goes to the E, and it hangs out on the E for a while. So when we come up to the E, I played the exact same thing that I played over the D chord, just two frets below that. Okay, um, and hopefully that makes sense as to why it works over the E. Now after that I played... So let's learn this. Let me show you how to play it, then I'll show you the uh, the little trick that I use for how to think about this. So what I'm doing is I'm going between the 7th fret and the 9th fret on the 2nd string. And then I do a, uh, go back to the 7th fret, 2nd string, but I do a hammer on and a pull off between the 7th fret and the 8th fret on the 2nd string. So you have... And then 9th fret, 3rd string, walk it down to the 8th uh, fret 3rd string, 7th fret 3rd string. I had to think about it. Okay, okay so let me uh, let me keep going with it and then I'll show you that, that trick that I was talking about. Then we're going to go. So now I'm going to play the 9th fret 4th string, 7th fret 4th string, and then we're going to come down to the 6th fret on the 4th string. So all together, Now let me explain where that's coming from. So let's go back to the chord shape. So let's go back to this E chord shape. That's using the, uh, I'm sorry, that's the E chord using the A chord shape. It's not the E chord shape, that's the A chord shape. A chord in first position. Now we're using it here. Now what I have learned is, and this is the little trick I was talking about, is if you look at where your two fingers are, in this case, when we're playing an E chord, we're on the 9th fret and the 7th fret. So we have like a little box here. Now I could take the 1st string, the 2nd string, and the 3rd string uh, in, in that box. And you can easily find the box because it's basically your chord is making that box. And I can play play any of those notes when I'm playing over an E chord. I can also fill in the middle spaces in between. So I can play... Alright, so that's called playing chromatically or using passing notes. Um, and so that's why that works. You're just... You're, you're, these are the actual notes that would be in the scale, I guess. But you're filling in the gaps. Now you have this little set of notes that you can play over this chord shape. That's where I was g g getting with this. And so that's really important because you can get this real cool, you know, country sound. It can sound jazzy. You can use that in blues. And I actually got this from B.B. King, believe it or not. I heard him play uh, over one of the chords, maybe the five chord, and he went... Something like that. I'm making that up a little bit, but it was some version of that. And so... Um, that's when it sort of dawned on me what he, what he was doing when I heard that. So just keep that in the back of your head now when you're playing over uh, this chord shape. So if you're playing over a C chord, you've got... And you'll see how it works. It really will color your playing. And it's pretty easy to find now. Um, all right. Uh, let me back up from the beginning. One, two, three, four. Two, three. Okay, 
and once we come down to this note, um, after I play that, I'm going to put my ring finger, while that note's ringing out, my ring finger comes up here to the uh, 7th fret 2nd string. And I hybrid picked that, so I picked on the 3rd string, plucked on the 2nd string. You can use your pick on both strings if you want. So that's that note. Now, where, what are those two notes? Why are they working? If you think of a... Uh, now remember, we're still playing over the E, so if you think of an E9 chord, for example, those two notes are in that chord. Now I keep my, uh, or I keep this note, but I actually actually switch fingers. So now I've got my middle finger on that same spot. That would be the sixth fret, fourth string. And then I put my ring finger on the sixth fret, second string. So we go from here to there. Now wh why did th those notes work? Well, that gets a little more, more complicated. Well, maybe not. Uh, the chord then would be a, an E seven flat 9. It's a nice chord that gets you back to the 1 chord. You can hear that tension and then the release. And so if I look at those two notes, they're in that chord. So that's why if you're wanting for those of you that are wanting to know. But don't you don't have to worry about that. You can just remember and then back to the 1 chord, which is the A. And all I'm doing for that is I'm thinking about the A major bar chord there and these three fingers are you playing the E chord shape but I'm just playing the top part of that just the top four strings barring the first two strings there on the fifth fret middle finger sixth fret third string ring finger seventh fret fourth fret okay so that's the first time through two three is defining the chords. That's because we're playing out of those chord shapes. If I was just playing the major pentatonic scale, it would start to sound like that. It would sound too scaly. Okay, now after we come back to the A chord, I went one, two, three, and played that little transition there. Now that's really an arpeggio. Sort of. It's kind of an arpeggio mixed with a little bit of the um, minor pentatonic scale as we come into that part. So let me show you how to play it, then I'll show you how to count it in. So we're going to start with a ring finger on the 7th fret 1st string. We're going to do a slide up to the 9th fret, and then back to the 5th fret 1st string. Like that. Now we're going to play... So that's 7 and 5 on the 2nd string. 7 on the 3rd string. And then we're going to play a hammer-on between the 5th fret and the 6th fret on the 3rd string. Like that. So we have... And then we're going to put our ring finger on the 7th fret 4th string, and then our middle finger on the 7th fret 5th string. Now, that's those are the notes, so we have... Now let me show you how to count them. So when we're counting that, we once we come to the A chord, we have one, two, three, four. So that comes in right where the four would be. One, one, two, three. And those are those first two sets are triplets. Triple it, triple it. And then these last two notes are just extra notes, I guess. Um, so let that all be a lick that you can use now over this chord shape. So if you were playing that over a G, that's a great transition to go from the one chord to the five chord. So you can hear that in a blues. And you can change the timing up and get different feels, but those, those are the notes. Okay, so the second time through, I went. Let me show you how to play that first, then we'll show you how to think about it. Easy to play because I'm doing the same thing 
on all of these frets here. So I'm starting here on the eighth fret, strings one and three, and I'm using my ring finger on one, my middle finger on the third string. And now I'm hybrid picking, so I've got my pick on the third string, my ring finger is plucking on the first string. So it's pick, pluck, three, one, like this. So I'm sliding into the ninth fret there, and then I'm gonna come up to the twelfth fret, Fingers are still in the same position, same fret. Back to the ninth fret, down to the seventh fret. You can hear that hybrid picking, both those notes at the same time. And you can kind of let them slide and start to play with the emotion of it. Don't, don't make it sound real robotic. You want it to be... You know, kind of like you're singing. Uh, now, I said I'd show you how to think about these. Um, first of all, this is just where we started. So think of your A chord. Strings one and three, that's all we're doing. Now these are harmonized sixths, by the way, uh, if you're wanting to know what this harmony is. But I just started a half step below, so that's a little tip that you can remember. If you want to get to a harmonized six for A, and I got that from Chet Atkins because I hear him do, would hear him do that all the time. So, you got that. Now, the other uh, takeaway from this would be, if you want to play the seventh sound, which will give you the kind of that bluesy, that's your seventh chord, you can take whatever this shape is here, and you can go up three frets, one, two, three, and it, you'll always get the seventh version of where you started. And so I, don't, I can't think of an easier way to describe that. I, I could get into theory and talk about this is the Mixolydian mode that's being harmonized and all that, but the, the, the best takeaway, I think, is just the one that you can real quickly apply. So just know that if you're playing, you know, off of an A chord and you're playing this note and you want to go to the seventh, just go up three frets. So that same principle then applies to any other chord. If we're playing a G chord, something in G, you could go... So, so just remember that. Three frets above, you get the seventh. We come back to the ninth fret, back down to the seventh fret, and we're just playing the, the, the major scale for, for A, but they're harmonized if you want to get into the theory. But you can just think about the chord shapes. That's what I'm doing. I'm picturing this chord shape here. And now is where the song goes back to the D chord. So I went... To the D chord. So I switch from this shape where we, I've got both fingers in the same fret to this shape. And what I'm doing there is I have my middle finger on the 11th fret third string and my index finger is on the 10th fret first string. And the reason that works over D chord is if you think of your D major bar chord and I just played strings three and one, that's all I'm doing, I'm just picking those two notes out of that chord. But I'm following in the same vein of that harmonized six. So starting at the beginning of it. We go up to the D chord, then I went. And that's just a little follow up to that. And let me show you how to play that. So we take the same shape that we're playing here, and we just move it up a set of strings. So now my index finger is still on the 10th fret, but it's on the 2nd string. And my middle finger is still on the 11th fret, but now it's on the 4th string. So we're going to go play that, and then we're going to slide down back to this shape. So now I've got my ring finger and my middle finger in this 7th fret on strings 2 and 4. Now, why this? Well, just think about your chord shapes. So there's your D chord shape. Uh, there's your D chord using the A chord shape. And look at strings two and four. So that's why that one works. And that's why that one works as well. And so that's what I was doing in my mind. I was just connecting. I knew that was a harmonized six for a D chord. I knew that one was as well. And I just, just connected the two in my mind, I guess. I could probably spend more time explaining that, but I think that's probably enough uh, just to get you going. But just, just kind of walk away with that. You know that you've got this. You know you can jump up a set of strings, and then you can walk back to this chord shape. So now you can connect chord shape to chord shape with harmonized 
sixth. Um, okay, so let me back up from the second time through. Uh, we'll start from. Okay, now we go back to single strings. So all I'm doing here is when I told you that little uh, tip that I told you over playing, playing over this chord shape. So now the song goes to the E chord and I'm thinking about the tip that I showed you, uh, you know, between frets seven and nine. So I'm starting on the ninth fret first string. Actually, I start on the seventh fret first string, sorry. Then I come up to the ninth fret first string and I do ha two half bends there and then release and play the uh, ninth fret first string without the bend. So we have. And then I did the same half bend on the second string. So I did two of those on the ninth fret second string and then went. So after I did the two bends, did the release, and then 7th fret, 9th fret 3rd string, 7th fret 3rd string. So you can see I'm using that same tip that I gave you. I'm staying in those little, uh, the, the box there between the 9th fret and the 7th fret. And then, that's the same thing we did before. So that's the 9th fret 4th string, 7th fret 4th string down to the 6th uh, fret on the 4th string. Now once I came down here, remember the first time when we played, we're going to do the same kind of thing, but I'm going to go ahead and finish out that chord. That's that E9 chord. So I've got my index finger on the 6th fret 4th string, and then I've got my uh, ring finger barring the first 3 strings on the 7th fret. That's playing that E9 chord. And then I came up and played an E6 chord. Here's another takeaway. We've got a lot of these in this lesson. But we're going to play, think of your chord shape, right? Between the 7th fret and the 9th fret. We're back to that again. Now if I were to just take the 9th fret and play the top three strings, that would be an E6 chord. So hopefully you've connected. Okay, so I've got my E chord. And if I just take this top part, that's an E6 chord if you have the E in the bass. You actually, you don't even have to play the bass string. On the guitar, you just play the top part of that chord. Um, so now if you want to play a C6 chord, you got your C chord, there's your C6. Now here's the, here, to extend this even further, if you want to go to the 9 chord, you can just walk two frets this way. Now you're playing a C9. So you've got a C6, a C9. Same with the E. C, E6, E9. Right? So there's that E9 we were just doing. Hopefully that connected that. Oh, okay, we were just playing that E9. Okay, so the E6 then, pinky comes up to the 12th fret first string, and then I release it. And all that is, that's just the E chord. That's the cage system. That's the top part of that G chord. I think that's what I called it in my breakdown of it. And then back to your A chord. And then I played a, a little walk down like that. That's just, after you play the A chord, it's just strings one, two, and then I put my pinky down on the seventh fret third string, and then take it off. It goes, and all that's doing is playing a A sus chord, sus four, and then re removing it. And that's where I'm going to end this part one video. It's a lot of information. I'm going to back up now and play through all of it one more time slowly. I hope to see you in part two. If you're not a premium member yet, you got to look into it. It's incredibly affordable. And uh, you get lessons like this every week and the whole archive of lessons. And if you really want to, are really serious about learning how to improvise, it's, a, it's an incredible value. If I do say so myself. All right. So let's back it up from the beginning uh, of, of this. One, two, three, four. Two, three. Two, three.